Welcome back to Winter Day 21 of the Stardew Valley Min-Max and 100% Perfection Guide. Today, we have a huge variety of goals to complete, including harvesting and replanting the island starfruit, completing the missing bundle, opening all of our geodes, finishing the museum collection, then ending the day at the volcano. And that's not all. While we complete all of our goals, we will be giving out some gifts to the NPCs and taking care of some smaller tasks on the farm and all around the map. I did actually livestream this day, but afterwards decided to reset the day to get this day to be near perfect, mainly because of one huge mess up. I forgot to bring my watering can with me to the volcano, but it's actually a good thing it happened because I was able to make quite a few changes to this day to save even more time and complete even more goals. So let's go ahead and get started with Winter Day 21. We will begin as usual by clearing our items that we got from Skull Cavern last time and grabbing any items we will need for the first part of today, making sure we spend the least amount of time as possible moving between chest to chest. We will also cycle our machinery and we did in fact get a caviar for the first time here which will be used in the missing bundle, which we'll see later on. We will be completing that today. We will finish cycling the other machinery over here, and then our coffee kegs as well, of course. Then we'll head into the greenhouse and harvest our fruit trees. And you'll notice my new strategy of doing this is harvesting by shaking the tree by right-clicking, and then pausing, waiting for the items to go into my inventory, and then moving on to the next tree, which will save as much in-game time as possible because often if you just run across all of them as fast as you can you won't be able to pick up the fruits because they just get left behind. We will also quickly collect the mushrooms and head into our coop which we do have an auto petter for. We did get that auto petter last time at Skull Cavern which is exciting. We also placed a duck egg in the incubator because more ducks are good for more duck feathers which are good as gifts for Elliot and Leo and then we'll pet all of the animals in both the coop and the barn, then play our horse flute whenever we can to save time when moving around the farm here. And I am going to place some scarecrows here just in case because I don't want any of my winter forageables getting eaten by crows. Then we will continue grabbing items. I did grab some pumpkins that we will end up selling to Pierre to be able to afford an upgrade from Robin and all of the starfruit seeds we will need. We'll also go into our shed real quick and grab the jades and whatever jades we already had to trade to the desert trader on staircase Sunday. Then we also have an orange for Gus, a pomegranate for Elliot, a beet for Pierre, and some more gold star starfruits to sell to Pierre because we will need even more money. The coconuts we will trade to the island trader for a golden coconut and the ores, we will be smelting some iridium ores, and the omni geodes I will bring to trade for some more desert totems because we are a little bit low on those, and some artifact troves. The void egg is for Sebastian, the crocus is for Sandy, although I definitely should have saved my crocuses to turn into more winter seeds because that is gonna be our limiting factor on winter seeds, but that's okay, one's not that big of a deal. I will grab some warp totems so that we can travel around the map much quicker. The cinder shards and bone shards are for trading with the island trader to unlock some recipes. The iridium rod is just to store the bait to use on our crab pots at the beach. And before we head off, I will double check and make sure I have everything we need. And then I will check the mail. And the reason I have 10 hardwood is because we do have a quest for Robin right here. So we'll need to give those to her and then go ahead and smelt the iridium ore here and then we can be on our way. We will be heading straight to Pierre's to sell our starfruit and pumpkins because we need to do that to get money in order to complete the other goals like getting the upgrade from Robin and buying starfruit seeds. There is a help wanted quest that we can grab and that is bringing a frozen tear to Shane so maybe we'll end up doing that later. And inside of Pierre's we are met with a cutscene and this does happen to be Caroline's six heart cutscene, which can be activated by entering Pierre's when Caroline and Abigail are both there. It is a rather quick one and will have no effect on friendship with anybody. We'll then head over to Pierre, give him a beat, which is just a liked gift, 
and then talk to him so we can sell our starfruit, pumpkins, and silver pumpkins. We will then head over to our next stop, which is the carpenter shop, which we should be able to get to pretty quick using our horse and speed bonuses from coffee and a spicy eel. And we'll talk to Demetrius, even though we have full friendship parts with him, and then can give Sebastian a void egg, but it looks like we are first met with a cutscene. This is Sebastian's six heart cutscene, which is activated when you enter his room and he is there. Sebastian invites us to play a game with him and there are many, many choices to make and we can earn a rating at the end between A and D, but none of this has any effect on friendship, so it doesn't really matter and we'll go ahead and skip over it because it is a long one. It is a bit unfortunate that getting a high rating doesn't have any effect on friendship. It would be nice for a higher rating on that game to give more friendship points with Sebastian, but that's all right. We'll give him a gift and then head on over to Robin and just purchase the community upgrade, which will unlock some shortcuts around the valley, which may come in handy. We'll go ahead and warp on over to the desert now, which will make two stops. First, we'll head over to the desert trader picking up some coconut forgeables along the way. We brought our Omni Geodes to trade to the Desert Trader for seven warp totems and 17 artifact troves precisely because we want 24 Omni Geodes left over for breaking open at Clint's later. We'll also trade our Jades for some staircases because it is Staircase Sunday after all and then can head on down to Sandy's Oasis shop and grab the cactus fruit along the way, which we'll give to Sam later on the island. Give Sandy a crocus, a loved gift, and then can buy 490 starfruit seeds, which when combined with our starfruit seeds that we already have, will be enough to plant all of the spaces that we have ready on the island farm. We'll then head over to Elliot's cabin to give him a pomegranate, where we are met with a cutscene. This is Elliot's two heart cutscene which can be activated by entering his home while he is there. He'll ask us an opinion on what book to write and whichever we choose we will earn 30 friendship points with him but this will have an effect on a later cutscene down the road although all of them will award equal friendship points. We gave him the pomegranate and can now be on our way We'll harvest the crab pots and rebate them, then head into Willie's shack, where we do have a pumpkin, a loved gift for him, and then can head over to Ginger Island. We did leave about 8,000 G left over, and 1,000 of that G went to the boat ticket, and we'll see what the remaining money will be spent on a bit later. For now, we make it to the island farm and start harvesting the starfruit. And you'll notice I'm using a very different strategy for harvesting the starfruit this time. It sort of looks like I am using my planting strategy where I hold my cursor off to the side and run across the field to plant the seeds. But at the same time, I'm harvesting the starfruit. This method of simultaneously harvesting and replanting is actually by far the most in-game time saving because we're essentially cutting in the time we need to harvest by just walking around the field on each crop space once because the way we did it before where we harvested every crop and then had to rewalk over every space to plant the seeds it took pretty much twice the amount of time but now we're just going over every space once and even better, when we are harvesting the starfruit, that animation actually freezes the game time for a little bit of time. So it's only taking into account the time we are walking between each starfruit crop, which is very minimal. And you can also notice this by just looking at the time in the top right and seeing that the time seems to be moving very, very slowly. And this method, the best part is it is the easiest way to harvest crops I find now because all you have to do is hold your cursor off way far away from your character 
and just walk over every crop and you'll automatically harvest it and plant the seed. So all you're doing is just moving around every crop space and you'll see occasionally I'll miss a few, but I can just go back easily. And really the only difficult part is navigating around the sprinklers. You'll see I have a hard time trying to move back and forth between the sprinklers when we go in between of them. But when I just move in a straight line, you can see how effective this is. And even with going in between all the sprinklers, it is still pretty effective. We will take a quick detour up to our chest up here, harvesting more starfruit along the way, of course, and skip over, just putting some stuff away to clear some inventory spots, because we do have some pineapples and taro tubers that are ready to be harvested. The pineapples, of course, are regrowable plants, so they will just have the pineapple plant in its place still but we will want to replant some of the taro tubers with starfruit and we do have some deluxe speed grow to pair along with that so it matches all of our other starfruit crops and you'll notice that I will pause quite a bit here to make sure I have all of the spots that I want planted with the starfruit seeds actually planted and take my time with that because we don't want to accidentally miss a spot and then have to go back to it but then after that we will continue harvesting the main starfruit field here and replanting them at the same time and I've got it sped up at four times speed now so we will just plow through this super quickly and although this does save a ton of in-game time it just takes quite a bit of real life time because we have to sit through each individual starfruit harvest animation but in a min-max run of course we aren't really worried about real life time and just try to save in-game time we'll go ahead and skip over organizing that chest right there and grabbing items that we want to bring with or items that need to be left there and then head over to the resort area we do have that cactus fruit for sam that we got from the desert and then we will buy some stuff from the shop here gus sells a mango wine which we will buy because we can use that in the missing bundle and then also a recipe for tropical curry and then we can give him an orange a loved gift and we already gave Pierre a gift today at his shop, but we do have a pumpkin for Abigail, so we'll go ahead and give that to her. And you will notice even between small steps by just going around these NPCs right here, I am still using my horse loot and summoning my horse because it is just so much faster with the horse. We'll head over to the island trader and give him 10 coconuts for a golden coconut, which will burst open later. Then we have 30 bone shards to buy the banana pudding recipe and 50 cinder shards to buy the deluxe retaining soil recipe which might come in handy if we decide to use any garden pots, which we can place indoors, inside sheds, and then have some starfruit growing there, which we may or may not end up doing. We'll see, but we will head on over to the dig site here, grab the mushrooms, dig any artifact spots, and grab some more bone shards. And thankfully, we have just enough inventory space to hold all of these items here, and then we can go ahead and use our warp totem to warp on back over to the farm. And at the farm here, we will need to get our inventory organized and cycle some machinery while we are here. Since we have a full inventory, I'm going to temporarily throw some items in this chest right here, then grab some milk and an egg to process. Then I will grab the items that I had already thrown in this chest and then go ahead and skip over the rest of organizing. And then once we have everything we need, as you can see, I have left quite a bit of room in my inventory here because we will be bursting open some geodes, so we will need plenty of inventory space. But before we do that, we will head on over to the old abandoned Joja Mart where we will find the missing bundle. And there we can drop off all of our items we got for that. We did buy the gold star wine to use there rather than using five golden star ancient fruit because the five gold star ancient fruit we could turn into more seeds ancient seeds for year two which i think is definitely more worth it we do make a quick detour up here to dig up the secret note 17 x marks the spot which we get a green strange doll for which is the last item we need to complete the museum we enter the abandoned Joja Mart where we find the missing bundle and can donate the void salmon, caviar, dinosaur mayonnaise, gold star mango wine, and prismatic shard. 
This completes the missing bundle and unlocks us a little cutscene here. And overnight, the Joja Mart here will be turned into a brand new movie theater, which we can buy tickets from and gift the tickets to NPCs to see a movie with them once per week, which will be able to increase our friendships with the NPC we see the movie with. So this might end up being a decent way to give some friendship points with the NPCs we are pretty low with. After the missing bundle, I should have went straight to the museum and dropped those artifacts off, but I forget to do that and we'll do that later, so that's all right. Clint did have a quest to bring him an iron bar, so we go ahead and give him one, and then we can talk to him and start processing our geodes. We'll start with a golden coconut here, and we'll receive a banana sapling from that. Of course, I am using the geode predictor here to maximize the items I get from all of these, so I will be opening them all in a very specific order, especially focusing on the artifact troves and getting golden pumpkins, pearls, and treasure chests from those, as well as high-valued minerals from magma geodes and omni geodes. And also, when there is a choice between ores, I will go for the gold ore because we are pretty low on gold ore, and getting additional coal is nice as well. And then from artifact troves, one more thing that we can get is ancient seeds. And ancient seeds only turn into one ancient fruit seed, but getting a few more of those will help with year two. Every seed counts. We will be opening all of our geodes, which is quite a few. Two golden coconuts, 17 artifact troves, 27 omni geodes, 43 magma geodes, 32 frozen geodes, and 24 regular geodes. You may notice that I don't have a whole lot of money and opening geodes does cost 25G per geode. So what I do is I do open the shop with Clint here and just go ahead and sell some of the minerals that I only have one or don't plan to get any more of and minerals that I have quite a few of like star shards, neptunite, bixite, helvite, all of those I want to hold on to and then I can sell all of those minerals and the golden pumpkins and treasure chests and pearls all at the end of year to make a good amount of extra money for the end of the year and going into year two. We will open one last Omni Geode, but save the Artifact Trove for later. And then I do have 750G of a quest reward here that I can claim, and 50G right now. And then selling something for 200G puts me at 250G, then plus the 750G from that quest reward will put us at 1000G if we need to buy a boat ticket to get to Ginger Island later. So I always want to be sure I do have enough money and means of getting the money for that. Anyway, we find ourselves at the mines in order to just catch a stonefish real quick. And it looks like we get lucky right off the bat here with a stonefish. It's a little bit more erratic than the ghost fish is. And it is indeed a stonefish, so we got that. That's all we need to do here so we can go ahead and head on out. We will go ahead and make our way back to the farm to drop off all of our stuff. And along the way, at the bus stop here, we can dig up the artifact spots and pick up the winter forgeables, most notably the crocuses, because we are low on those and we need a few more of those to be able to craft some more winter seeds, which we will do a bit later. We do make it back to the farm and we'll skip over organizing our stuff and we'll quickly make a stop inside our house in our cellar and go ahead and throw in some goat cheese and some regular cheese. The goat cheese, of course, will give to Leia and probably not Robin now because we are almost at 10 hearts with her. But Leia, we are at only one heart, so we do need to work on leveling up friendship with her. And the regular cheese will make for a very nice healing item. We will go ahead and harvest the fish pond row, then make our way to the forest where we can dig up some snow yams and winter roots which aren't really necessary just because our limiting factor is crocuses so the additional roots and yams won't make too big of a difference but we will make our way to the secret woods and harvest the stumps here for hardwood we can turn the hardwood into more regular wood from our wood chipper i don't know how necessary getting more hardwood right now is but 
while we're down here, we might as well make the stop. And if we ever need more wood, I'd much rather get it on a day like this where we aren't doing anything super important like a school cavern dive or volcano run or eventually a danger in the deep run. It is also nice to have a large supply of hardwood because some of the late game items like the hopper and the heavy tapper and ostrich incubator all require lots of hardwood so we will be needing a lot of hardwood if we decide to craft those in the future. We will dig up some more of the ground here and you will notice that even though there were no artifact spots we still got some snow yams and winter roots which is nice. We arrive back at the farm and craft some more winter seeds, which we will plant right away. This is one of the last days we can plant the winter seeds. With our 10% crop speed grow boost, they will grow in 6 days instead of 7 days. So they will grow on the 27th, so we could plant them one day later, but I don't want to be harvesting a bunch of winter forgeables on the last day of winter. That day we need to reserve solely for preparing the field for the next day, the first day of year two. It is starting to get rather late, but we still will try to make it to the volcano tonight. I will craft an iridium band here for combining at the forge, which we'll probably end up doing tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a nice volcano run. We'll make a quick stop here at the adventurer's guild to pick up another ring, the savage ring, which we did unlock by slaying 150 void spirits, one of the monster slayer goals. So let's go ahead and go into the adventurer's guild. We will get the savage ring over here. And we also have the slime charmer ring, which we got from slaying 1000 slimes, but we probably won't be using that ring at all. We can go ahead and warp onto the beach now. And even though it is already past 10 p.m., we still need to make one additional stop before heading to the volcano, and that will be at the museum. And here's an example of when the key to the town comes in handy. We can just go into the museum after hours. It usually closes at 6 p.m., so we do have the key to the town, so we can just come in here at any time as we please. Donate the strange doll green and the palm fossil, which does complete the museum collection and we will collect the star drop reward from that, but leave all of the other rewards that we have left there already because we don't need more clutter. And I think we only need two more star drops. We'll get the one from catching every fish pretty soon, and then it'll take a little bit longer to get the one from the spouse or roommate at 12.5 hearts. We'll most likely try to roommate with Krobus still, and then at 12 and a half hearts with him, we'll be able to get that final star drop. As I mentioned earlier, we have a quest reward to claim for 750 G, which will put us a little over 1000 G, which is perfect for buying a boat ticket here to get to Ginger Island. And this is another example of the key to the town coming in handy. We're able to make it to Ginger Island after Willie's closes, which is very nice, and then we'll head on over to the volcano. It is very late in the day, and we'll only have three hours at the volcano, but that's all right. We'll just try to collect some cinder shards, definitely not make it to floor nine or the top or anything, and then we'll just pass out at the volcano and be able to wake up here tomorrow, which is nice because tomorrow we'll have a full volcano run where we collect as many cinder shards as we can, make it to the forge, and then can combine our rings to get some new combined rings. The next day will also be the start of a new week where we can pick up a new key challenge from the Golden Walnut Room, and we will be getting lucky and select the danger in the deep quest and get a head start on that the next time as well. If you are looking forward to what's to come, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see the videos when they come out. I do plan on live streaming the Danger in the Deep quest, which will be on a super luck day on Winter 23. Most likely, I will try to stream this on Tuesday, May 31st, around evening time in the Americas. That's also why I posted this video before I usually do on a Tuesday, so the next video will most likely not be until Friday. Feel free to leave a comment with anything you'd like to share perhaps any tips or tricks you have for the Danger in the Deep quest, since I will 
be taking on that challenge very soon. Before we end, let's take a quick look at this volcano run that's going on here. We make it all the way to floor 7 with only having about 3 hours, and we did collect a decent amount of cinder shards. Let's see if we can real quick slay this last lava lurker. Unfortunately, no dragon tooth, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and pass out. We'll see the Junimos repairing the Jojamart and bring us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and good bye.